iPhone. We have a blunt, we have some fire, we have a bong, we have a thing that works. We have, look, we have hand sanitizer. Amazing and hand spray. sanitizer. And they go put it in the air a little bit, maybe? I mean, can I show you what's so great about EO? This is how you know how good EO is. Well, we're not, we, we could we could do it on the, when it, we're not live yet, but. Okay, fine. <laughs> You're right, it's too late. Can you hear me? Should we frame it up? Cause it. It's pretty rad, actually. I don't know. We, we could turn the lights on, but it's kind of fun like this. Where's that echo coming from? I think it's just a friendly room echo. Da da da, 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 da da da. I don't even know what this is. Like a little special one hitter. Like kinda. a little micro. It's like a micro bong rocket ship. Mm -hmm. Have you guys hit that? I think you're supposed to put a blunt up to the little. Oh, you put a blunt up to the bowl. Yeah, it's like a blunt. It's called a blunt bubbler. A blunt we bubbler? That's some fucking futuristic us. shit. Wow. I mess with blunt. What do you think? Blunt bubblers? Are you ready for that? Futuristic rocket ship technology? Are they going to wow. make fun of me if I cough when I smoke? No. I, I mean, everyone's going to make fun of you whether you like it or not. No matter what we do. They're always making fun of us. It happens. That's true. It happens. Mary Jane, it's Halloween, and it's about that time. I'm your host, Noah Rubin, and we have a very special guest today, Mr. Mark E. Basie. Now, guys, if you aren't up on the Mark E. Basie movement, open your earballs because he has a new album on the streets. It is called PMD, following up years and years of hits. This guy is on top of the game. Thanks so much for coming through, man. Thanks. That was a wonderful intro. I do what I can. I, you know, this is not, not the normal one. You know, like usually, it usually is a little more straight ahead, but you know, it's Halloween. We're in the Halloween mood. Do you, are you a fan of Halloween? What's your take on Halloween? You like it? You get in the mood? I like the scantily clad women yes. pretending like, I'm gonna be a nurse for Halloween. Sexy nurse. Shout out, sexy to, our, shout out to our sexy nurses. Shout out to all of them. And, uh, I'm not the biggest uh, costume guy myself, but I don't know. You know, actually, what made me kind of sad this morning? What's that? I woke up, and I was like, I think I'd rather sit in my house and grill food and pass out candy than, like, go to this Halloween party where everyone's going. I feel you. Is that bad? Does that I mean, mean that I've grown up all the way? or like I, I don't know. My policy is this, Mark. I do every other year. You know Every what I mean? Like year. when you were young, when I was younger, it's like okay, I'm fucking gonna try to turn it up. Now I'm like, you know what? I need a year between concepts. The concept is hard. If you want to actually be original, actually execute well, you got to be thinking about this at least thirty to forty days before Halloween. Really? Yeah. Like, if you last minute, no way. No. I'm a last minute type of guy, anyways. So I would have no chance. So I just use Halloween as just another excuse to party. People in LA party so much, so often, all the time. True. That it's kind of just, you know. But I like the idea of people getting freaky and kind of letting go and trying to be someone else uh, for a day or two. Also, it seems like Halloween lasts for like a month in LA, in New York. I feel that. I feel that. Well, because the stores immediately turn. Like, basically, the minute the summer is over, it's Halloween. You know what I mean? That's what they're everyone's focused on. The Halloween stores open up. People start strategizing their costumes. People start making memes, um, thinking about what their uh, Halloween vibe is going to be. Now, you said you don't, you're not, you're not really feeling the Halloween spirit this year, which I feel. But have you ever previously? What would you say is your greatest costume of all time? I mean, like I'm so bad. The last one we did was a bunch of trash bags, and we went as white trash. 
they were white trash bags. That was a last minute. I did like a good Robin Hood, I think, like in third grade. That okay. I was proud of. Okay. I think I made that like with my mom. That's good. A little like hi- homemade like family it. family. I went to like bonding. one of those like hippie schools when I was little. Mm-hmm. Shout out to uh, Waldorf School. It was yeah. Called. No, no media. What before the age of ten no, or something? No TV. No TV watching. No logos on T-shirts. Have to make your own Halloween costumes. Just get to be a kid. Just get to be a kid running around. That must be impossible now. Um, but anyways, I'm into Halloween. Halloween's great. Yeah. I mean, great holiday. Probably like, one of the best holidays if you think about it. I mean, you know, I I do think it is pretty good. I mean, how often do we get to have like little spiders and stuff here on the set at about that time? You know, I I, I definitely enjoy it a lot. Um, it's fun, like you get to scare people. Yeah, scary, scary. I mean, how I many think scare? maybe as a trick or treat tea. No, I'm a trick or trick or treater. Well, I'm not a trick or treater anymore. You're a trick or treat tea. A trick or <laughs> treat provider. I'm not sure. A treat <laughs> provider as a. Um... I'm a provider, so maybe I should get. Maybe I should, I'll get some last second scarier decorations. You always remember that house that you went to as a little kid, where you actually were frightened. That could be my house. Yeah. I have. The, I live in the perfect neighborhood, and I'm moving on Friday, the day after. So little kids come to Spalding. Check and it out, and guys. Melrose. We'll be there passing out candy. Good, the well, good so, candy. Sometimes you remember the house that was spooky. The other thing you remember is the house that gave out the full, best candy. full size candy bars. Yeah. When you got the full size candy bar instead of the fun size. Is that what I should do? That's what I'm gonna do. That's pretty swaggy. That's make you make people's lives that way. That's like that's a real next level thing. If you get the full size, full size real candy, not the not the trick or treat size, I think that's I think that could make your Halloween. Okay. I think that's what I'm gonna do. What do you think is the number one most popular? candy bar with the youth these days hmm what is the candy bar most popular with the youth nowadays probably not chocolate i feel like less and less people people like yeah are people only in like sour, pa- sour patch kids or Ooh, like sour patch kids are good okay. sour patch kids i think i th- think are still strong i mean i think red vines are still kind of strong um i also don't know i mean also like some like japanese like imported thing oh, i'm sure like i was uh, just in japan i yeah. should have known i know actually that would have been a good hookup they would have brought some that. like crazy Pikachu you know fucking whatever something. it is chocolate filled Pikachu cookies mm-hmm. I think people would like that <laughs> I mean no no uh, no doubt people want a chocolate filled Pikachu cookie I want a chocolate filled Pikachu cookie we've got uh, we've got a sp- spooky cat is joining us we got the spooky oh. cat coming down from above oh, wait, I gotta give my uh, uh, scratch. you're giving him a, you're giving him a little scratch you're giving him a little scratch scratch on his head we're, f- we're friends. It's inverted. It's a God little like it's it. like a reverse. It's kind of like oh a, there I go. There we go. Give him a little scratch. Give him a, oh, you're making out with you know making out with the kitty. Making out with that kitty. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. He's showing love. You're giving love. Everyone's having a love a lovely time. I'm all about it. Mm-hmm. Um, switching gears a little bit. You just dropped a new record. Uh, tell us about the new project. Um, the new album is PMD. It stands for Postmodern Depression. Um. I worked on it for like 18 months, way too long. I did like the whole thing where you trip out and make like 30 mixes of every song. Just really unnecessary looking back, but I'm very proud of it. It's my best one. Uh, I'm only going to mention this because it's Halloween. Yeah. But apparently, Michael Jackson's Thriller, they mixed it 99 times. And this is back in the day when they had the consoles. And it was like like really recalling those mixes is very difficult. Apparently they did 99 separate mixes on the song, and the the version that appears on the album is mix one. They went back, they mixed it 99 times. They went back to mix one. Are you one. sure about that part? I've heard this. No, that's insane. That's what that I would heard. Hurt. Wow. 99 mixes, and they went back to number I one. I mean, and put it on usually, record. generally speaking, when you create a song, the original tempo, the original key, and the original mix is usually the best thing. What happens? Like, you go make 10 songs in a couple day span or whatever. Everyone likes one, like kind of like rough demos. Everyone likes whatever song they like. Usually it's the same one. You find, you identify, this is the best song. And the reason you like the song, you think is just because of how it's written, but it's actually the way it sounds. So then when you change the way it sounds, it's like, it's a headache. That's why people end up going back to the first when the, they're like, oh, the demo. People love it the was demo. good the whole time because it sounded good, not yeah. just because of how it was written. Yeah, it's, some, it's sometimes hard to 
uh, extract those different aspects of it, the underlying song from the way you heard it the first time. Exactly. You know? And people get demo artists too, and they get attached to the old version, all that. But but PMD, we I think we did a good job of like finding the best one. One right. thing I like a lot when you spend a lot of time on an album, you have uh, you've lived with songs long enough that you really know which ones you actually enjoy. And so when you put it out, it's like, I've listened to every song so much. Like, these are just the songs, you know, I wrote, I recorded probably 100 for the album. So these were like the 11 or 12 that I just liked listening to the most. And I feel like they, you know, chose them correctly. So there you go. Well, sometimes that process is not always easy. You've got to have homies around you that you can trust. Did you do a lot of playing, playing all the options for, for the folks, for the fans? I have, luckily, I have a very good kind of like inner circle when it comes to music. Um, so it's like it's like five or six of us. Every once in a while, I like be with another artist. I spend a lot of time with G Easy, and he's got a big studio at his house. And we kind of like I would like do the party song test over there, and then. But other than that, like a couple places, but mostly just you know the the inner circle, my producers. It's like I really only worked with like three people on the album. And were those folks that you had worked with a lot in the past, or folks that you like brought my be- in? My best friends. There you go. My whole, all, all my music uh, production comes from like two of my best, three of my like closest friends. Do you want to give them a shout out? I mean, you know, yeah, uh, there's Nick Knack. You know, he did like maker of the little, hits. Yeah, huge, huge hit maker. It's like my brother. Um, Jess Jackson. He just mixed and worked on the new Kanye album, Jesus Is King. We could argue about that probably. Yeah, we could yeah. have we could have we, we could do like a two we hour. Are, we, uh, we are getting a little higher. So. We we could reenact. Well, actually, we could reenact the two hour Kanye interview. Um, you I know, didn't see if, it. if you want to be Kanye, you know, we could make make that happen. He has lots of quotables. He's um, these guys never not quotable. quotable. Yeah, that's the point, right? It's his uh, job. I guess that's kind of where he, what he's going for. Um, so he's pretty good at it. <laughs> he's really good at it. Give him some props. Um, good job, Kanye. You're great. Kanye um, with quotables. Yeah, so, but yeah, it's a it's a, a small circle and everyone. Oh, so I have Jess, Jess Jackson. He worked on the album. He just mixed and he works with Mike Dean on all the Kanye stuff. So he gave me a lot of my sound comes from him. And then my partner, Count Basie, uh, he's who I like started my whole career with. And he's my like creative director, producer. He does everything and he's the shit too. So, yeah. Well, it sounds like it's a nice squad. It's a nice, it's, it's nice tunes. It's a little bit of a different approach, though, because obviously you were sort of in major label land, and now you're now you have artistic freedom. But I even did that in major label land, and that's why it didn't work. Right. They were like, I mean, it worked. It was cool, but I was so I was I'm a very stubborn individual. They're like we have a, they were, we have a focus group that says that you should be writing hooks about this, this, and this. I, I mean, <laughs> you know what? They're getting better. Major labels are getting way better. Now True. they just sign whatever's already popping anyways. So it's kind of... I might do it again, even. I don't know. We'll see. You could do it again. You know. I got no... I'm not like... I don't have any of that. A- every person's trajectory and story is different. So anytime someone just generalizes like... Major labels are bad. Or it's like... No, it's uh, not. It's what it's all what you make of it, right? Yeah, and it's just like... It's luck, it's chance, it's time, timing, all that. Totally. Totally. Uh, well, Mark, we like to do a segment on About That Time. We call it Post It Up. We take some posts from your Instagram. You tell us uh, what's going on in the picture. Uh, the first one uh, looks a little painful. Um, you're getting inked. Now, uh, are, are, how long have you been getting tattoos? Since the first day I could, 17. I don't have that many, but like there's one for every phase, kind of. But I got the... I have like the 18 year old like look I just got a fucking tattoo <laughs> tattoo you know that's that one and then I have like some uh, Sly Stone my favorite artist ever he's on my down here and album titles and just a couple of things there oh you and go. I just got this is this what the this is the, uh, the this picture's is right up there on the screen I don't know is so it, yeah I just got the, the third eye on the neck yeah it's it crisp. should be like right here but technically yeah you don't want to be on some like Charles Manson <laughs> yeah, shit <that's> right <laughs> you're like hey guys check out my fresh yeah. new tattoo and they're like Wow, he's really gone Charles Manson with it. Yeah, wow. but I uh, <laughs> we got sound effects going. We do, guys. It's official sound effects. Shout out to our boy MP. He's the he's the man behind the MP sound effects. MP are killing that, bro. Yo. We need more of those. Hey, uh, keep them flowing. 
I always like, have you seen the Howard Stern movie? I have seen the Howard Stern movie. Private Parts? Yes. That's so exciting when he's hitting the little, it's like mechanical <laughs> little toy sounds. Yeah. It seems like it would have been fun. Uh, yeah, so this, uh, this only hurt towards like the back of the head, like the hairline. Right. That started to hurt, but other than that, solid. Also, this was a D. Lee, David Lee uh, recommendation. Oh, the, the eye? Well, no, the, the tattoo artist. Oh, I, the, can't, I can't no, remember his name right now, but. Well, it looks like he's got a tight shop. And he's definitely got you pinned down there, getting your like, third kinda, eye. Like, I think I was like talking a little too much, and he kind of sort of. It's kind of like it kind of looks like a little <laughs> MMA moment. Kinda, he's like, he's like, yo, you you train? What's up? I think he, I think it was good because, you know, you can't fuck up right there. That's all bad. There's not a lot of room for air, so he had to pin me down. The fucker was strong too. I believe it. I believe it. Well, he had to get that third eye in your neck. That's not always the easiest task. Yeah. Um. Well. After you uh, have a stressful experience like that, it's important to decompress. The next picture from your video, do you like a good bath? And when you bathe, is it always in blue? <laughs> that, you know what? <coughs> That's probably the only bath <coughs> that I've taken in like the past five years. <coughs> I don't have a, I have a bathtub, but it doesn't get hot enough. I need like 100 to 10 degrees. Really? You like, like it real hot? scalding fucking hot. Right. Um, but there is kind of a funny story attached to this. So I was about to shout out my boy Damien Sandoval, music video director, also a close friend of mine. So I'm going to do this shot, and I have like a little like boxer brief situation. And there's like 25 people around, and he's like, Basie. You need to be on some rock star shit. Like, this is hell week. Take those things off right now. Walk out there like a star. And I was like, I really don't want to do that. <laughs> but he really called me out. And so I did it. So I'm just, take the shit off. I walk out butt naked. I get in to this tub. And the first thing that happens is I sit directly on the stopper. And all the water just poured out. Ouch. So I was just, and it was freezing. So I was just Ouch. naked in the tub. Naked and Everyone afraid. Around naked me. and afraid. One of the most vulnerable moments of my life. Um, but they refilled it. They put the little bath bomb in there. It was freezing, so that was not stress free. Although I do like a cold plunge. Cold plunge is cool. Cold plunge is the shit. Nice, uh, nice answer to a, a sauna steam room moment. Just that whole like, jump in that cold plunge. I'm like addicted to that. I go to the Korean spa. Oh yeah. Respect. So Do you have a good. Korean spa preference? Yeah, it's just one. The fuck is it called? Sorry, I have no way. I don't. I've never known what it was called, but it's on uh, Wilshire? West Sixth Street. On West Sixth Street. West Sixth and like you know a little past uh, Western. Well, the Korean spa is a magical thing, mm -hmm. and uh, and the hot the hot moment, sauna steam room to the cold plunge. That you can get addicted to that. I, yeah. Now. You're, is there too cold of the cold plunge, or do you like it literally as cold as it can be? I like it as cold as it could humanly possibly be. Wow. A man of freezing, extreme. Freezing, freezing, just go in, dip my head in, just try to sit in there for like five to ten seconds. Yeah. Kind of can change your life right there. It's a far out experience. It's really good for you. Yeah. Really, really good for you. Get those toxins out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I like the sauna in the steam room, too. Um, and maybe a blue bath now and again. Mm -hmm. Could actually happen. Uh, we got another picture from Posted Up. Uh, leopard pants. Uh, how do we feel about that? How do you feel about leopard pants? You rock them. Those are dope. Same. I'm wearing the same shoes right now. Same shoes. Well, that's the nice thing about those shoes. They they're not they're not one they're and done. That, yeah. Those will last you forever. Forever. Um, no, those are some fire. Those are Noah. It's this new brand that's really cool that I like. And uh, you know that's a little loud for me normally, but. That was for a video shoot, um, so you know sometimes I step out there. That's like my Halloween. Halloween's like every day when you're there always kind of. There you Maybe go. There you go. Halloween's just the same old, same it's old. Like yeah, I get. To I'm wear already le wearing leopard pants on a fucking regular ST yeah, day. So Wednesday. why do I have yeah. to? Why do I have to go out there and? Try I was gonna actually you, wear those here, which would have been embarrassing. <laughs> if I, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a. But if you're if you're owning the style, and this is sort of a Halloween themed episode, I think it would have. I think it'll okay. work just oh, that's right. That's true. Yeah. Um, what What about other animal prints? I mean, we got the the. Is that this is leopard print, right? I yeah, think that's it's like officially a leopard print. Leopard. Cheetah, leopard cheetah, print. cheetah, it's cheetah leopard. leopard. It's leopard yeah. 
what about do you do you think you could go zebra? I mean, zebra is a more extreme look. Zebra is extreme. Probably couldn't pull that off. Couldn't pull off like a, a cow that also gets a nay. The neon zebra also a nay no. probably. Maybe like a like a really nice like fur coat. I always dreamed of having one of those. I, I'm with you on that for sure. Yeah. I mean, start with a shearling, you know. Nice I have shearling. a shearling. There you go. Yeah. What is that again? Shearling is a lamb. Lamb. Little little yeah. whims. I like that idea because you don't have to fucking brutally murder it to be worn, right? Uh, with uh, the shearling, it, that's a that's a dead lamb as well. You don't need to wear a wool coat for no, it to not murder the animal. No, but don't you just cut the fuck? No, but the shearling that as a, the skin and the fur still attached together. That's how wow, the leather that element is so of the shearling. Dark. I mean, truth of the matter is, we're animals, guys. We do some animalistic things. We actually have a check-in from our audience. Uh, we like to make sure they're part of the combo as well. Will G. Smith, what's up, Mark, and how high are you? <laughs> These are important <laughs> questions. Will G. Smith, that thank you for a, asking the tough one. This is really a smooth and yeah, nice. Yeah, it's, it's a I smooth feel... and delicious uh, pre-rolled blunt. Yeah. Um, don't, don't imagine that could possibly be, be, be legal given that it's tobacco and cannabis together, but it's delicious, and that's what matters. Is that a thing? Why wouldn't that be legal? Well, you can't sell tobacco and cannabis in the same shop because it's a oh. different license. So there's no oh, yeah, permit sorry. that so you, you can make a, a tobacco and cannabis product together. I don't think that exists in the legal market. Mm -hmm. But that being said, One day. I'm glad, glad that it exists in the illegal market. Mm -hmm. Or just right now so we can smoke it. Um, but do you want what? What is your answer? How high are you? I'm uh, I, I'm high, but I'm on like a good smooth. Yeah, plane. good. It's a it's a chill high. Now you grew up in the Bay. Mm -hmm. Weed culture is very much present in the Bay. Yeah. Uh, what were some of your first uh, weed experiences? Probably like smoking a bag of oregano when I was <laughs> eleven or something like that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's how it really starts for it's you. It's happened like, to the best of us. Middle school in the Bay Area. Um, and then I had like the the high school, you know, like smoke with my friends and eat a whole box of cereal and laugh at everything phase. And then when I started smoking and making music, changed my whole life when I was 20. And I was like, you know when you first start listening to music high and it's like, oh my God, it's like a transcendent kind of thing. That had that in my early 20s and you know, now recreational whatever when I feel like it yeah when keep I'm it mellow yeah. keep it mellow alright we got another flick All right. uh, from the IG uh, performing live now you said you just came back from Japan I did how was that it was amazing we did uh, this thing called armed forces entertainment so we went to a bunch of bases and played for the troops naval bases marine bases and then we did a, a festival in Tokyo with like a couple other pop artists so it was cool. We got to have like this kind of cool military experience, which I have no connection to and know nothing about. And then we also had, we would go into Tokyo and have like the best sushi and ramen and party. Yeah, it's kind of like the best fish you've ever experienced. Is that really what it is? What's going on? Why would it be so good? I think that just because it's part of the culture and it has been for so long, their ability to kind of like identify the best methods oh, that's and what, way yeah. of procuring it. You know, it's just like it's so part of their long-standing tradition that they're able to just do it at such a high level. I remember when I was in Japan, I felt like the grocery store sushi was like better than like good. Seven Eleven sushi, sushi, ramen, all that shit was like just as Ridiculous. good as the best stuff you would have here. Exactly, exactly. Well, shout out to Japan. Uh, so that's uh, but on stage that picture we just showed. Uh, where do you know where you were in that one? Um, that was I just did a summer tour mm -hmm. with this guy John Bellion. Incredible singer songwriter and it was like an amphitheater tour that was like pretty much the whole summer two months 40 shows most I've ever done on tour that's a lot that's the the crew jacket I was wearing in there um or I'm right there it's on sale now 40 40 amphitheaters you done did that I done did that I wasn't I was you know direct support or whatever but it was so much fun we did the Greek we did like a bunch of also, like I, we got to do like Midwest Southern shows that I totally. wouldn't usually do. Like Nashville, it's one of the, it's an incredible city. It's pretty lit. Indianapolis, like huge amphitheaters, and the like at sunset was my stage time. Um, it was just, it was great. That's yeah. a great way to spend the summer, huh? It was the best way. It was crazy. Yeah. Um, now being outside 
enjoying the summer sun. This next picture looks like you are also enjoying the outdoors at some sort of. Uh, oh, this is this may be from Japan. Oh, this just happened. Yeah. Yes. So you you got to I'm tour around my, a little. Uh, it wasn't wearing my Prada Merce. As you can Prada see. Prada Merce. Is Every, shout Merce. out our Merces. Here, I'll wear my Merce. We'll have a okay. man a man to man Merce moment here. <laughs> we'll just get our Merces on. This is the first time so, anyone's ever said that sentence. So, guys, this is the fir first time ever broadcast a, a Merce to Merce uh, moment. Cheers. Guys, wow. shout out to all our Merce wearers out there. Yes. It's a real thing. Uh, it should, there should be no shame. There should be no Merce shaming. You know, guys, we're a very, we're a very positive environment here. It's very safe here. We don't, we don't encourage Merce shaming ever. I love just that. Just be who you need to be. I love that. Yeah. I feel like people in here could very easily judge me for my Merce. I feel I could be judged for my Merce as well. Sometimes I see a picture of myself in that and I'm like, <laughs> I was like, how long is that going to really come stay around? I think about that also. Yeah, sometimes, I, I think sometimes, it's the like, positioning. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to wear it like this. No. Eventually, Some, sometimes just, Also, sometimes I take it off, I'll just hold it in my hand. You know what I mean? Like, You're self-conscious when that's happening, for sure. Yeah, it I'm just kind of like, eh. But <laughs> like, it's like one, a... The one thing I do like though, the no the no wallet in your pants. I like that. You know what I, mean? I like it too. <laughs> it's just like to hate having shit in my, in my pockets. No, yeah. terrible, terrible, terrible. The only other option, guys, if you don't want to see guys wearing Merces anymore, you have to invent a pair of pants that enables you to just have all your stuff. Not like in literally, them I hate having shit in my pockets so much that I always wear a vest, literally just so I can throw shit in the vest pockets, like a nice whatever, like a car vest. I think vest. that's a, that's another uh, another option. But I was doing it anyways, so now I have, you know, the Merce is just an extension of that. It's true. I wasn't true. just fucking copying, fucking trying to be cool. All right, all right. No right. one's accusing you of that. All right, all right, we want to check in with our sponsors real quick, guys. If you are just tuning in, uh, Mary Jane, Snoop Dogg TV, this is about that time. I'm Noah Rubin. We're chilling with Mark E. Basie. The show is brought to you uh, by a fine cannabis proprietor's Loon. Uh, they make wonderful pre-rolls, they make wonderful uh, accessories, they make wonderful vaporizers, they make wonderful cartridges. The show is also brought to you by the legends at G-Pen. They have magical technology that helps you vaporize your concentrates, your herbs, uh, whatever you need to vaporize. This is a collab they did with Cookies. Um, great stuff, great times, um, keeping the vibe rolling. Mark, we do a show, a part on the show, uh, we call it Roll the News. We take some headlines from around the world um, and we talk oh, about wow. it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. We keep it positive, though. This isn't some uh, ranting news show. We're going to have to talk about news show. Syria we, or something scary no, like that? No, guys, we're, unfor it is an important issue, yet we, we keep it light. We find okay. headlines that we feel are going <laughs> to be consistent with our vibe here. The I, first, I can't wait to see what this is about. Uh, you just came uh, from Japan. This first one will resonate with you. The Colorado governor uh, on his Facebook page just offered advice on growing marijuana plants bonsai style. So the governor of Colorado is giving marijuana bonsai tips. Are you ready to get into the marijuana bonsai game, courtesy of the mayor of Colorado? Wait, the he's trying to fuse those two things? Or he's just no, he, telling... he's actually sharing with his audience tips on how they can do cannabis bonsai on their own so he oh, was actually wow. like sharing some links on facebook talking about the cannabis bonsai movement that sounds like the coolest thing i've ever heard of if i walked into a garden that was full of cannabis bonsai trees i mean it's pretty good that's incredible it's pretty good yeah that's so cool but they hate weed in japan they do it's not a thing it's, it's not a really, thing is uh, bonsai japanese bonsai is japanese okay yeah so that sucks did you guys maybe was, that'll bring them together was was that a They'll little be bit like of, i have to there you go maybe yeah. the, maybe you should sponsor some sort of competition get the greatest bonsai masters That's, to work on some cannabis and maybe we'll we'll bridge the we'll bridge, bridge the, the gap, gap. Yeah. yeah it's all but what i did hear was that up until a couple years ago mushrooms were just openly legal in japan so no weed but mushrooms were legal until like a couple years ago like at you'd go to like a herbal store and like mushroom well like they do a lot of they use mushrooms like astragalus and all those kind of like health reishi yeah so they do all that anyways they're down with mushroom health i'm into mushroom health i'm into mushroom health guys everyone out there are you guys eating mushrooms because i think mushroom mushroom health is important also if your head turns into a pumpkin or jack-o-lantern this um, is what I would be seeing. If you know we were what I mean? Uh, what, right what mushroom would you recommend if I wanted to turn my head into a jack o' lantern? You know, yeah. is it is it a half reishi, half lion's mane combo, or, or psilocybin? And and maybe yeah. a couple of drops <laughs> of that for sure. Well, anyway, shout out to the governor of Colorado, uh, Jared Polis. Uh, 
bonsai cannabis tips you know it has a potential to bring people together that's what i like about it great headline um we have another headline i think it's pretty great as well it turns out there's a correlation between the price of bitcoin and the price of avocados if you look at the historical price trends of bitcoin and the historical price trends of avocado they actually correlate it makes so much sense so much sense guys it makes because it really does make sense, right? Being, I don't understand sarcasm. That's one thing that you should know about me. Oh, that's fine. Is well, that I think I think it does. Was that sarcastic? Well, I think it, think about it. Only upper crusty rich people have Bitcoin, and guacamole and avocado is a major luxury. So you think that the more so, people have their Bitcoin cash in their pocket, the more they're gonna want to go out there and get their guac on? Yeah. Wow. Or they're more. Able, I guess that would drive the price down, though. I'm not an economist. I'm sorry. Nor, but no, I just I just I. see them both kind of growing at the same pace. Like the more people have Bitcoin, the more people are going out and buying guacamole. Okay, that's the highest like thing that. I've ever said in an interview. In my I life. think so too. We definitely need to get a clip of that afterwards because this is a deep. In my mind, it deep, makes perfect sense. We've never had a financial analyst on the show, Mark, but I'm glad that you came through to give us that little <laughs> financial analyst flair that we've really been missing. You know, you don't even know that it's missing. Uh, until you experience what it's some like. Some economists on here, you can just tell me why I'm wrong or right at some point. Bitcoin after. and avocado. There should be a futures market. We should create. We should create a mutual fund around the Bitcoin. Bitcoins and Growing avocados. Together. Yeah. Agreed. Well, uh, they did do some analysis, and though the trends are almost identical, uh, no one is saying they believe there is a direct correlation in reality. Even though the prices actually do trend together. Uh, Someone pointed out there was another interesting statistic that points to correlations that don't necessarily make sense. Apparently, per capita cheese consumption in the United States uh, has a near perfect correlation with the number of people who die after getting tangled in their bed sheets. That one I can't tell whether that's real or not. So how is that a statistic? The, the number of people who die more, tangled in their bed sheets? Yeah. So like this, the number of people dying in their bed sheets no, correlates I, exactly with how much cheese people are eating. Well, you think I would say people are eating a pretty consistent amount of cheese. Would is there a holiday where we're getting extra cheesy? Also, it kind of goes like it's a little less than avocado, but the more people have money, the more cheese. It's true. It's true. Cheddar, cheddar bed sheets. That could happen. You could be eating cheese in your bed, and that could lead to a sheet-related accident. So guys, before you eat your nachos in bed, make sure you double check for your sheets being pushed to the side because we don't want any strangulation. But nachos in bed no. kind of is recommended, actually. If you've got a good plate and a good napkin situation, I that think you could, have, you could have some nachos in the bed. Are you mm -hmm. in the bed eater or are you OCD about that? No eating in the bed. I'm like, I still like just move my bed to the living room and eat whatever the fuck I want on it. And Right, you're like really like, like unless I'm trying to impress somebody, I just it's all just one. You gotta just kind of roll. You, you gotta like to it's roll always, over. It's always clean though, but yeah, I do. But like, like to do you that. know, it's like oh, I'm just I getting like roll my roll over here. I have like some ramen. Yeah. You gotta have stations. You gotta have your stations. Have stations. You know. If you really want to get into that relaxing food, yeah, it's great. That's good living. Definitely. If I could do living. that all from a hot tub, that's my next goal. Oh wow. Hot tub life. Well, hot you said you're life. moving. Uh, I'm moving on Friday. Soon. We have a hot tub. The so new place. New pl new place has a hot tub. Mm. Wow. But the question is, are you gonna put in a cold plunge? Yes. You gotta put I'm in the cold plunge. I'm not even kidding. Like. Do you really have a cold plunge plan for the new spot? I have a plan. Man, a man with a cold plunge plan. Shout I need out. to uh, find my buddy Jackson Skyward, real name. He just sent me this. Guys, this be like some hardcore porn or something. No, it's not. He, he he's I'm showing not us a picture of a stainless steel tub, often used for animal feed. Wow. Those type yeah. of tubs, but also great to fill with ice and jump in. If, 126 if bucks. 126 bucks, guys. You could get a trough. And you could fill it with ice. God, this nah, is important. I don't it's think a, it's a fucking trough. It's like a big I'm stainless it up with steel iron. I'm gonna do it. So I think that's I think that's amazing. That's my way. That's my plan. No, do would you go full ice cubes? Would you jump in a trough of ice cubes, or is that draw, is you I drawing? I don't. I think I, it would need to be. I don't know. They do it in like. They do it in after. Yeah, yeah, like after yeah, they the play best. a game of football. Yeah. So it's not impossible. Yeah, I guess I don't really do anything that quite equates to like football being in the NFL, but. Yeah, but that doesn't mean, way. doesn't mean you can't enjoy jumping into trough of ice. I'm going to do it. Yeah.
All right, well. I'm serious. If you guys want to come, you guys can. We, next time can we do come. a thing, we can come to the house. It's a great house. Yeah, we'll do a hot tub moment. We'll do a. a Go back and forth. You got to go like 10 times. Um, yeah, that would be great. Uh, we have one more story right, on it. Roll the News tonight. Uh, it's about politics. Uh, it's about a guy, Bernie Sanders. I don't know if you're a Sanders supporter or not. He's getting some support out there, uh, which I think is a good thing. Uh, he said his uh, chief of staff uh, just said that they were open to covering medical marijuana through Medicare for all. Bernie is running on the fact that not only should we all have health care, but our health care should also pay for our weed. Are you in? I'm I'm so in. I'm a huge. I really uh, I'm really into Andrew Yang. Uh, Yang Gang. I'm part of the Yang Gang. I'm actually playing a show at a Yang Gang rally. Okay. I read his book a couple years ago, so I've been really into him. But of course, you know Bernie Sanders is the goat to me. He is. And yeah, I don't see why everyone. I think like medicinal marijuana and CBD is the most effective thing in my life. So everyone should but have it, and it should be covered by it's Medicare. Like it's unreal. Why not? Why not? I don't see a reason why not. Mm-hmm. It seems like good people are having good feelings. So, Burn, thanks for thanks for I'm staying on top it. of that one. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it too. Um, now, tell us more about the Yang Gang show that you have coming up. Um, it's with Weezer. Sick. How fucking how cool is that? Dude, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Legends. Uh, yeah, he just I like uh, I think his ideas are a good balance of uh, just like where the world is actually going. And being as liberal as you can be, right. And so I just, you know, I, I read his book. It was really interesting. I like the whole AI thing is crazy, and he just seems like he was aware of something completely different than the normal conversation. So I was just into it. Yeah, it will. Cause he's I really, think I, I donated some money. I think he's just paying me back. There you go. The show. There you go. I think that's reasonable. That's great politics. Uh, it's great. Everyone <laughs> should be paying off everyone. That's that's. <laughs> That's, a, that's a good more trade. the style yeah, of those who deal. are in office yeah. now, but, you know, um, it's, it counts. That's legit. Yeah. Well, shout out to Andrew Yang. Shout out to Bernie Sanders. And shout out to Medicare for All Covered Weed. Definitely. Who can argue with that? Who can argue? Um, we're going to take another moment to check in with the audience. Uh, Mary Jane, Snoop Dogg TV. Uh, if you guys are just joining us, uh, this is about that time. I'm your host, Noah Rubin. We're chilling with Mark E. Basie. Uh, the show is brought to you by Fine Cannabis from Loon. Uh, many fine products, many fine uh, ashtrays, even fine vaporizers, fine pre rolls. Uh, also, our friends at G Pen. Uh, this is their great cookies collab. They just dropped a new vape called the Connect. Uh, they make amazing products, and you guys should definitely patronize them A S A P. Um, can I open this? Uh, you can. I even have one because I have a gift bag for you. Oh, no way. From Loon and G Pen. Oh Look my at that. God. We, don't, oh we don't let you come to the show and not hook you up with some wow. goodness. You got your own G Pen in there. I can swap you out for the cookies version if you want, whichever you feel. But it's Let's the just same. Check it pen. out. This is a great packaging. It's great packaging, guys. We're going to do an unboxing. This is a live unboxing of the G Pen vape. Tell us about this one. All right. Grenco Science. Grenco Science, guys. This is the Nova Lux or LXE. Um, it's four concentrates. Uh, they have a blue version. They have a black version. Uh, it is includes the battery uh, and the tank and the USB charging cable. All important things. Here, I'll, I'll take this. Shout one. out, shout out, cookies though. Yeah, yeah shout out to cookies. Rep in the Bay, like a real, Rep real strong, bay, real, real San bay, Francisco bay shit. Bay brand. Yeah. All right, here's the here's the cookies version, guys. That's that's beautiful. Do I just pull Yeah, this just thing? pull that pull that up and then I think you'll I see. I feel like we're on like Good Morning America right now. Was the price is the right. How about really we should do the fucking pl- alternate price, universe? Maybe version. the price is right. We should do the price is right but for weed. I've never seen the price how is much? right for some reason. How much is this big? Oh, that's, you know oh. what I mean? Like you come on down and then they like they have to guess the prices of groceries. This is really nice. It's sleek, right? This is fucking dope. Man. Very sleek, very wow. sexy. You know, a real about that time unboxing live the G Pen. Right. Doing it big. What's not what's not to like really yeah. at the end of the day? Put your put your fine concentrates in there. Do your homework. Find a great pr- producer of concentrates, and um, you know go there accordingly. Uh, now, Marky, we checked in with you. We checked in with the world uh, through the news. Uh, we like to make sure we also check in this with the stars. We do a segment we call Astrology Time. <laughs> um, now, before we we go into another dimension, we change the color of our reality. I, I break out the salt crystal lamp, oh, put nice. it on the desk. We get the salt ca- 
crystal lamp cooking. People out there can't really see it. Let's see. Do, 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 do. I think we can make it. We can make it vis visible. Look at this. Uh, it's all right. You guys get the idea. We have a salt crystal <laughs> lamp. We get groovy on about that time. Now, do you ever take a bong hit, Marky Basie? I haven't in a while. This is a bong designed by a NASA contractor um, with a spring-loaded carb. Um, I invite you to take a hit off the bong if, if you, you know, like no pressure. I'll, I'll you, take. You go first. I'll, okay, I'll take it. I'll go in like two minutes. I'll hit it. That's how. That's so tight. Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's the future that's of bongs, great. guys. Right here. It helps us get into the astrology time mood. Um, now, uh, we did some research. You're an Aries, is that right? That is right. Born a, April 9th? April 9th. I'm a double Aries. Oh, yeah. A moon or a rising? I, th I think it means, from what was explained to me, that I have the same, like the day of my birthday and the month of it are controlled by the same. Yeah, that makes something. sense. Yeah. Uh, I also am an Aries. I'm April 4th. Oh, wow. So, you know. Wow. We're very close. Aries, nice. Aries posse guys in here. Uh, we're going to give you a little Ram Slam. Uh, so, I don't know if you uh, are you into your are you into your horoscope? Are you into your chart? I am reading? now. Now that I heard Ram Slam, <laughs> I mean, who can argue with that? Uh, I yeah, kind of. Yes. Do you I'll, do you I'll read it? Yes. Do you read it and you're like ah eh, on point or not nah, on point? I have like, this app on my phone called uh, Pattern. Yeah, people are into that. People are into that. It's just like, sure, it's right. <laughs> I can't tell. Okay. It's never like, it never tells me anything that, you know, I didn't already know. Yeah. But so every once in a while, every once in a while, has a, it has a nugget. It has yeah. a nugget for us. Well, what we did is we took your natal chart. We found some different sentences from it. And you're just going to tell us if you think they're on point or not. Okay. You What's would, it called? A natal chart? Yeah. Your, your birth chart. Sense. Your birth chart. Oh, well, okay. okay. Um, so element number one from astrology time. Tell us if you think this is on point or not. Uh, they are not afraid to challenge the status quo. Are you are you ready ready to challenge what what everyone's just accepting as what we should be doing? Yeah, I w I'd say that's how I've been my whole life to a certain extent, probably. Yeah, comfortable with it. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, fuck the status quo. Yeah, I, I think I'm that not into that. Status quo can always be challenged. I think that's a, a reasonable way to spend your life is challenging the status quo. Yeah. All right, so it sounds like the horoscope is pretty on point with that right. one. Uh, element number two, uh, as parents, they often like large families. Now, I don't think you're, <laughs> I don't think you're a father yet, but do you ever see yourself as being uh, having a large family? It's pretty hard for me to see that. Maybe two kids or something two like kids that. like something like what's large like three or more is pretty that's, i think three or, i think three when you cross three three is three is like large but you don't get xl to your four i just i can't imagine someone having more than two or three children and still being <clears throat> career obsessed yeah which is kind of what I or am. even so properly that, raising your children like unless you like that, put them in the backyard and just like let them run around yeah i don't know so but every you know Sometimes, like, you hear all those crazy stories, like, re a lot of really successful people were, like, the youngest of six or something crazy. It's true. It's true. I don't know. They had a lot going on there. They're exposed to It's like to so much, videos. yeah. It's a different time, a different era. Large <laughs> families, though, that. today, like, it's kind of hard to, like, get psyched about having a bunch of kids. <laughs> You're like, yeah, they're going to have to deal with all this stuff that really basically is going to suck. Some don't people, half the country feels pretty much the opposite of that, though. They're into it, I feel like. It, uh, it does seem like there's a, a differing of opinions on yeah. that one. Some people are like, Just keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I feel it. So I would say that one's wrong. I, <laughs> it's kind of right, though. I don't know. I mean, like, you can, you can I imagine. I fantasize like, about having, like, ten kids sometimes. Oh, wow. Wow. That's a, like, it's a, a little fantasy, different. Now you're changing like, your story. Like, I wish I was, like, like Will Chamberlain or something. <laughs> like, just well, a, there's a difference a between crazy, what, what like, a seven-foot, like, alpha male type dude just, walk, like, having kids everywhere. I don't know how many kids he had, but... He, de he definitely put numbers on the board, but I don't know whether it was actually with children produced. <laughs> That's true. So. I meant... I just meant, like, being that type of... I don't know. Yeah. Well, the there's idea something, being There's something to it. Yeah, it's a... Move to a farm. You know, take your all your kids, put them in... Uh, in uh, I could just go full Mormon and just have multiple wives do the whole thing. Well, it does seem from a, like a, from a project management perspective... 
that could be advantageous if you're going to have that many kids, right? Like, okay, 10 kids is a lot, but if you've got a couple If you're people, bringing it down in between. And then like, everyone can work in shifts and no one gets stressed out. It does seem like there's... It there doesn't seem could be that off. Smart. Yeah. I mean, you know, different strokes for different folks. Mm -hmm. um, we have another element from the horoscope tonight. Uh, they like sampling different jobs and careers. Have you felt like you've enjoyed jumping That's around? on my natal chart. It's in your natal chart. Wow. No. I was going to the NBA till I was like 15. For real? No, I mean, no. I've, in my mind. In your mind. 100%. Yes. And then I was going to be a professional musician. So. A couple. Now, I did That's hear, it. though, a rumor that there was a moving truck period I in work. between. I have a rumor. Unconfirmed. You can confirm it for I me. worked at, uh, on Hollywood, Fort Hollywood Movers in like Reseda. That was the best job ever. Yeah? Everywhere, every house we would move, the people would give us weed. So we would smoke. You, They always get high and then like give you a bigger tip. And it's like a personal thing when someone's moving all your personal shit. So we would make like 1200 bucks a day and I was 18 and it was like amazing. Just the best job, yeah. Well, smoking all day. I, I mean, I don't know that everyone who's been a mover has such uh Maybe it wasn't reviews. that much, but it was a good that was a great. Sounds job. like being a stripper basically, like It kind of like, was like it was throwing <laughs> they're like throwing ones at you while you're moving the couch <laughs> like could be could be all right. It was great. It is kind of, you know, all the guys are like Yeah. Okay. And everyone's like, "Wow." <laughs> That's a heavy. That's, that's a heavy couch. Hot, yeah. Did you wear the belt? Did you have the belt? I don't think I wore the belt. Yeah, when you're 18, you're like I whatever. Fuck, fuck it. it. All right, man. all right. So a little bit, but not too much. Um, now, we have one more element uh, from the chart. Uh, this one says they insist on accentuating the positive. Do you feel like you're especially good at at having a positive attitude? I accentuate the positive. Yeah, for sure. I don't yeah. celebrate it too much, but like verbally, with with people I work with, um, I always try to. It's not even something I try to do. I'm just I'm like that. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, keeping it positive. Spot on. I, I think that's important. That's important in life to try to keep it positive because there's a lot of negative shit out there and it can definitely drag you down. Um, yeah, and it's like in music, it's so hard. There's so many letdowns and so many almosts, and so if you have like something good going on, it's exciting. Maybe you just gotta be patient with it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it happens. Well, I think that I think the horoscope was pretty on point tonight. It, at least it had a good vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the only one was the the job thing. But maybe if I wasn't well, until I outed singer, you for your moving job. That's true. And you didn't out <laughs> me for I worked at Banana Republic in the stock room too. That was weird. We don't have to talk about it. Okay. Well, Banana it Republic. Happened. Yeah. Stock room. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, you brought in, when you walked in, you brought in uh, some hand spray. You were going to walk me through uh, the vibe. Why don't, you, why don't you give us a little, set us up a little bit for this. This, this, this is uh, everyone uh, hand spray, hand sanitizing spray, which is made by EO Products. And this is coconut lemon. My family, my, uh, my mom and my stepdad started this company like almost 30 years ago. Wow. Um, yeah, crazy self made. Start in the garage, the whole the whole story. It's very, it's just the healthiest version of this product that exists. And so I was saying, like this is this is real infomercial. You can uh, smell mm. so good, right? Just totally clean, clean and pure. Yeah. Nothing unnatural. But you know, like you could spray this in your mouth and it would be fine. It's like what other hand sanitizer? It might even it might even pack a buzz. <laughs> Should we try? <laughs> Look at that confidence in the product. It's like a mouth. It could be like a breath spray. Try. I it's swear to God. It's okay, perfect. I'm gonna read the ingredients first. Let's see. Is there anything? I'm that's telling gonna you, there's literally here? nothing in there that would hurt you. Just purified water and basically essential oils. It's All essential right, oils. <laughs> wow. It's you, not bad. Honestly, kind of like, have you ever bitten into a lemon peel? <laughs> no, yeah. but I mean, it's a strong, a strong lemon flavor in a good way. It's very, it's very, it's very clean. clean. Yeah. It's very clean. Super yeah. clean. Well, shout so. out to EO. Shout out to having great hand sanitizer. Yes. Um, before we wrap up the show, we want to make sure we give you a second to shout out uh, what you have coming uh, for the rest of this year and next year that people should be checking for. 
Well, I, uh, first and foremost, postmodern depression uh, came out a month ago. Worked on it for like the past year and a half. I think it's the best album I've ever done. Very proud of it. So that's out everywhere. PMD, postmodern depression. We're gonna go on tour early February, nationwide tour in Canada. Very excited about that. Um, I'm touring with my buddies Gianni and Kyle. They got a new song out there that's popping right now. And uh, let's see, besides that, I mean, we have a charity show in the Bay. Um, we're teaming up with this company called You Speaks. I used to do poetry slams back in the day when I was like uh, middle school. And I would go there. It's on Valencia Street in San Francisco. So we're doing a show with them on the 28th at the New Parish. Um, full, like, I'm going to have a huge live band, guest artists, a lot of Bay Area singers, uh, songwriters, all that. So come out to that if you're in the Bay. Good shit. Uh, well, Mary Jane, Snoop Dogg TV. Guys, thank you so much for checking in. This has been About That Time. I'm Noah Rubin. We've been chilling with Mark E. Basie. Make sure you check out his new record, PMD. Uh, shout out to Loon for sponsoring the show. Shout out to G-Pen for sponsoring the show. Guys, it has been lit, and we will see you very soon.